Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick here, dropping in. Hope everybody is having a start, great start to your day. Look, I'm gonna get right into this because I'm running a couple of errands and then I've got to get back to it. Um, first and foremost, uh, we are still in the middle of the fundraiser, uh, specifically for Black Men Lead. Uh, which is our Rite of Passage program and our Wraparound Services program, uh, which is so huge in efforts to socialize properly, socialize racially socialize young black boys, which gives them much of a better chance of succeeding in life and being positive contributors to uh, our community and our culture, uh, reduces proclivity for violence, reduces uh, dropout rates, which reduces incarceration rates, and I could go on and on and on. Uh, but we also have other programs like the Music is Life program. We also have programs for young black girls uh, and for young women who uh, have experienced trauma throughout their lives as well. Uh, you can give directly to the Black Men Lead program or you can give to the organization in general. The both links will be in the description box. We need your support. Uh, when we talk about uh, all the things that are going on right now, it's easy to get caught up in talking about what's wrong with black men without talking about what happened to black men. See, black men weren't always adults. Uh, they were boys, and we live in a culture where our boys are targeted in public school starting as early as five years old. I've written about that in The Miseducation of Black Youth and Academic Apartheid, my 16th and 24th, book, 24th books. I have committed a great deal of my life in providing resources and helping young black males because without strong black men, we can't really pursue the dream we love talking about, which is black empowerment. Uh, that's not going to happen. We need healthy black women. We need strong black men. And there's a path to that. Uh, when I created Black Men Lead, I created Black Men Lead because it was on the heels of my research into uh, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. You know, what were the catalysts behind it? Were there, some, were there a, a ways to mitigate it, control it, reduce it? Uh, and there absolutely was. And I discovered it. I wrote about it. But I said, hey, writing about it isn't enough. We need to actually create programs. What's one of the best ways to socialize young black males? Rite of passage. It sets them. It gives them every principle, every situation. Gives them a sense of identity. Gives them a sense of accomplishment. Gives them a sense of direction. It's so much that comes out of it that it is a powerful tool. So I created Black Men Lead. So when I sit up and I watch the things that I see young black males doing right now that is absolutely devastating, destroying families, destroying lives, destroying themselves in the process. And I look at it and I say, this could be one of the kids, you know, and I say kids, if they're under 30, I call them kids. This could be one of the kids that could be touched by the program. This could be one of the kids who can change. And I have young black males who are under my mentorship now who were either in the program or came to me for membership mentorship purposes, who are now contributing back, even after having made some bad decisions that put them in situations that they uh, had to re re recover from, did some things that cost them, and yet they're doing some unbelievably powerful and positive things. We don't have to mortgage our future to pay for our past, but we do have to be clear in the direction and the resources we give these young black males, whether we start them out in, in, in socialization programs like Black Man Lead at early, as early as age four, or if we are going to, you know, engage them in, in, in a more challenging uh, manner, which is after they've already uh, been influenced by the, the hood, influenced by uh, poor musical culture influenced by negative ideas and images of who they are that is paraded across every medium of media that is whatever it is we still need to meet them where they're at now I am one to admit 
there are some that are incorrigible. I don't think it's as many as most people think. I think kids can be reached. I think, as a matter of fact, I've reached some p kids that people say it couldn't be reached. So I know that it's possible. Here is my challenge. My challenge is we really need to have a national network where there's a rite of passage and an understanding of how to reach these young boys. The, 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 the dynamic and the, the understanding and the knowledge is there. We simply need to do it. We also need to have a universal uh, understanding of what a black man is. What's black manhood? How do you find it? How can you look at it? It's, it? It needs to stop being so ambiguous. It needs to stop being arbitrary. It needs to be a clear understanding. To be uh, seen and respected as a man, you have to be executing X, Y, Z, you know, down the line. It has to be that way. There's too many different ways that we are defining ourselves based off of what we do well. Yeah, I mean, you got the bad good. That means you can support a family, but can you be mentally and emotionally present? Can you be the strength of your family? Can you be a priest in your family? Can you be a prophet in your family? And I'm not talking about telling the future. I'm talking about speaking into lives and over lives. Can you do that? That's all a part of manhood, but we're not teaching that. We're teaching them how to get the bag and use the bag to manipulate. And that is a concern of mine. But we really need to be more invested in the future of our children. We keep saying the children are the future, but we're not invested in the slightest way. We're not invested in any significant way. So again, we are pushing to resource a national network to which I'm going to personally help set up. So number one, if you have a city or, or a, a reasonably sized town, where there are black boys that are being pulled into the system because there's not enough men modeling proper manhood to put them on the proper path, email me, CEO at the Odyssey Project 21.top. Let me know your town. We will definitely put you on the list and we will try to make this happen, but we need resources. We need to be in the community doing what is necessary and we need to be doing it on a grand scale at this particular point because we're losing kids at an astronomical rate and we don't have to. No, we're not going to save everybody but there are a bunch of kids that can be saved that are falling through the cracks and it's on us. We need to stop expecting the government to fix it. We need to stop expecting other nonprofit organizations to fix it and we need to gain an understanding of who we are and do what we need to do in order to make things happen for our people. And so once again, I'm gonna ask you to go in the description box, click the link and give. You can either give directly to Black Man Lead or if you wanna give uh, so that it can be distributed through other programs in, a, in, in addition to Black Man Lead, you can give through the general link uh, to support the organization. Uh, but whatever you do, we need to start making some major moves and I cannot stress that enough. So once again, our goal this week was 5,000, no, $10,000. We haven't raised a thousand. We haven't raised 500, honestly. And so this is the story, but yet we keep getting more and more people coming to us in need of what we offer and I haven't turned a person away. I may, they may be on a waiting list depending on what it is they need, but you know, mental health stuff, I'm going after it. I'm dealing with it. I'm figuring it out, but we have to do better. I'm sorry. We do on that note. Look, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to run in and do what I got to do. Show some love, show some support and click that box. Help us. I mean, I think we can do 5,000. I, I know we can do 5,000 if we actually were committed to it, if we actually done it. Um, but again, if you know, if you are a city or a town that needs the program, email me. I gave you the email address, CEO at the Odyssey Project 21.top. Uh, if you know of someone who needs the services, email that same address. Uh, despite an extreme lack of support, we're moving forward. Uh, I'm not going to sit back in the trenches and throw my hands up. I'm just not built that way. 
So we're moving forward, we're figuring it out, but it would be great to have you guys behind us. Uh, again, if you're watching this video, I'm talking to you. Uh, it's easy to think the next person is gonna do it. We gotta stop that. We gotta sit down and we gotta actually sit up and say, what will I do? You know, I've been in this game um, fighting for my people since my adulthood. I'm 55. And this is supposed to be the year that I pass the torch to the young bucks and I kind of sit back in an advisory position. Uh, it's probably gonna be a few more years because not, not that many are ready. Uh, but I'm definitely ready to give it to a younger, more vigorous group uh, so they can do what they do, but I wanna make sure they're ready. So in, in, in essence, that's what I'm saying. Let's make some things happen. These kids are so gifted. They're so talented. They're so full of potential and we're allowing the system to totally destroy them. That's my appeal to you. So on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.